are here to talk today about the carbon footprint and the fossil resource footprint of different dairy farms in Canterbury. Um, the idea of this presentation is to work that we work with a partner, Lincoln University Dairy Farm, which I'm sure you all know quite well, pasture-based farm, very low amount of brought in feed, most of the feed being produced on the farm, and comparing with a Canterbury farm that is in the same region, same climate, but uses uh, normal management, bringing um, brought in feed as palm kernels, feller, and others. So no special feelings about Canterbury. Uh, you probably noticed by my accent that I'm not a Cantabrian. So uh, let's uh, start. Uh, you pro you heard about life cycle assessment or the footprint calculations, carbon, nitrogen, water, and life cycle assessment or LCA is the methodology that we use to perform those calculations. Uh, you could heard life cycle analysis as well. Uh, I'm not precious about the term, both fits LCA. And as any scientific methodology, LCA follows a protocol. Actually, LCA has an international standard uh, for doing that defines LCA as a technique for assessing the environmental aspects, the potential impacts associated with a product, a system, or a service. So what we basically do is to look at what we call cradle to grave, so the full life cycle of a product, and this can be done for anything, it could have been done for the table, for milk production, for beef, for anything you can uh, imagine. So we start at the production, go over all the cycle, and sometimes you can also come back when you have recycling. Uh, so based on this framework, based on the story that is being, you're talking about the product, you can calculate different uh, environmental burdens. The most famous one is the climate change or the carbon footprint, but also there are others uh, important ones like water, land use, and the fossil resource depletion, so the amount of fossil fuel that is being used to produce that specific product. So here in this presentation, we're focusing on uh, climate change and the uh, resource depletion. But there's a range of other, uh, what we call impact categories that could be assessed as well. Uh, looking at the dairy farm, uh, the idea here was to, if we're talking about milk production, we're talking about pasture. So well, let's look at the beginning of the cycle up to the farm gate where we can uh, make changes on the farm. So that's a cradle to farm gate analysis, so not the full life cycle. Uh, and here, since we're considering the life cycle of the product, uh, we start with the upstream, so all the production of the inputs, production of fertilizers, production of the feed, going, uh, transportation and going to the main platform for the dairy farm, but we also have to consider that uh, the wintering off process uh, and the replacement that you are buying for your farm, they are also part of the life cycle, although they are not usually on the same farm. So that's what we consider, and at the end we uh, allocate emissions, since a dairy farm is producing both meat and milk, you allocate emissions between these two co-products. And again, uh, comparison between uh, Lincoln University Dairy Farm and uh, Canterbury average. So going straight for the results for the sake of time, uh, here we have uh, the carbon footprints in kilograms of CO2 equivalent, so that's transforming all the three gases, methane, nitrous oxide, and CO2 in one equivalent, following the global warming potential of these gases, by kilogram of fat and protein called ratchet milk. So some things that we notice, first one is enteric methane that dominates the emissions uh, up to the farm gate, and we see that uh, LUDF had a smaller uh, footprint than uh, uh, average Canterbury farm. Most of the, the differences here is on this gray area, which is the CO2 from the supplementary feed production. So the production of the feed that's being brought to the farm that influences this footprint. There's also a bit of difference on the, uh, on the orange one because a Canterbury average farm had more cows, so more influence on the urine dung uh, nitrous oxide emission. Uh, it's important to look at the difference between gases. So methane, for, they have a similar profile between the different greenhouse gases, but we see that CO2 on an average farm is about 12% and on LUDF about nine, so a, a bit of a difference. 
most of the CO2 for the average farm comes from the broth, sorry, there's a R here, uh, a broth in feeds. Uh, while if you compare with Lenko University, that goes to other, and those other are precisely the wintering off and the replacements. Uh, so that's one of the main differences between them, and that is influencing the carbon footprint of these two different farms. If we look at the, well, it's important to put this in a comparison, uh, just to state the difference as well. Uh, we see that um, a Canterbury average is very near uh, New Zealand average. That's the work from Dr. Stuart Ledgard uh, from AgriSearch, a recent paper. And the world average is a calculation uh, from a recent uh, study as well, uh, published by AgriSearch in association with the RNZ. So even, uh, yes, uh, New Zealand is very efficient, and especially uh, uh, the pastoral or the pasture-based farm, uh, are very efficient compared to the others. Looking at the fossil reserve depletion, then here we have some uh, uh, difference between them. Uh, LUDF ended up having uh, more use of fossil fuel uh, because of the fertilizer, mainly, but you can have also more uh, electricity, uh, the yellow one, which can be connected to the irrigation uh, used on the farm. But you can see by the orange uh, bar the difference between the brothing feeds and the influence of the brothing feeds uh, in the final footprint as well. So again, putting in comparison to others, even though uh, uh, they are a bit different, but they are almost half of the mixed systems, uh, mixed systems with um, both confinement and pasture-based. And even with the dual purpose system, but not so efficient, uh, for example, in tropical uh, climates, almost four times what we have here in New Zealand. So final conclusions is, first of all, these studies should look at the several impact categories. So here we're looking at two. And the importance of that is not, you not swapping pollution. So sometimes you come with one solution for, um, a specific problem, but you are uh, doing something bad for other one. Uh, and that's something that is recommended. The second is that low or no use of the broth in feed uh, is equals a reduction in the carbon footprint and also in the, um, uh, in the resource depletion. But looking at the, the broth in feed category, um, and there's some papers or uh, recent uh, reviews looking at that as well. Uh, third one is the areas for greenhouse gas mitigations, but it could be uh, as well used for the resource depletion, our anti fermentation and nitrogen fertilizer use. It could bring uh, the results even uh, lower. And some future work that we are carrying, we are doing now in association with Link University Dairy Farm is analyzing over time uh, because they have a very good database of uh, of the farm and uh, the actions that happen. So checking the management practice that happened over the last 10 to 15 years and checking how this management practice influences the footprint and what can be done uh, for other farms as well in New Zealand. So thank you very much.